Jesus was not a divine figure. Jesus was a human person. He was a completely human person. And it is only in the few decades after his death that his followers attributed divinity to him. So in a sense, Jesus as the divine figure is a creation of the church. Now this has been the rediscovery of scholarship in the last 200 years. When we have tried to get behind the New Testament documents which reflect, of course, what had been happening in the, in the decades after the death of Jesus, try to get behind those to discern if we can, and it's a very difficult task, what the original historical Jesus was really like. He was a teacher. He was a human person, very, very human, just like ourselves, except that he seemed to be able to speak with authority that they were not used to. And it was because of that they were led eventually to attribute to him the authority of God and so conceive of him as a divine person. And the first followers never saw him as divine. They were the Jewish followers, the disciples, who became the apostles. The person who began first, as far as we can see, to regard Jesus as divine was St. Paul, who had never known Jesus in the flesh and had only the experience on the Damascus Road. He had a kind of supernatural experience on which he based his understanding. And in the end, there was tension between the original primitive Jewish Christianity and the Gentile Christianity, which was promoted by Paul. And in the long run, of course, the Gentile Christianity won the day. And in, in some respects, one would have to say that uh, Christianity of the Gentile kind was a distortion of the original primitive figure of Jesus. When I first came to the Holy Land, what excited me most was not the holy sites, but the landscape to see the mountains and the lakes and the valleys. You see, they hadn't really changed for thousands of years. And just to see them was in fact to make the stories of the Old Testament and New Testament come alive as they'd never been before. Here by the Sea of Galilee, in a spot like this, Jesus called the fishermen to be his followers. And of course, he crossed the sea many times and he is said to have calmed the storm and walked on water. Of course, those are grossly exaggerated stories of the kind that get attached to any great man. Jesus was not the supernatural figure he was later taken to be. Rather, he was a man just like us, but it was his teaching that really impressed people. For example, the prodigal son and the good Samaritan were characters that he created, and he spoke to people with such freshness and power that they couldn't help feeling he spoke to them with the authority of God. When you come to Galilee, you begin to wonder what the man of Galilee who walked these shores 2,000 years ago was really like, because the human person was largely hidden by the figure of the divine Christ, which was created by the devout imagination of the early church. Now, over the last 200 years, New Testament scholars have been trying to recover something about the authentic Jesus. And none have done it better than a group of scholars called the Jesus Seminar, whom an American scholar, Bob Funk, called to work together some 20 years ago. And what they've come up with is what they call simply the voice prints and the footprints of Jesus. When I first heard Bob Funk speak about eight or 10 years ago, I felt nearer to the original human Jesus than I'd ever been, because what they have fastened on are particularly the parables and his one-liners. These are the authentic 
teachings of Jesus. And they were quickly uh, put together into what was known as the Sermon on the Mount. Now, there never was a Sermon on the Mount. What the early Christians wanted to do was to show that for them, the teaching of Jesus was really a new version of what Moses gave on Mount Sinai. Now, that particular tradition gave rise to the church you'll see behind me here, which commemorates the Sermon on the Mount, and it's called the Church of the Beatitudes, because the Beatitudes are the opening words of the Sermon on the Mount. for me remain the center of the Christian tradition. The parables are stories which often have a, an unexpected ending, which were told by Jesus to get people to think for themselves. This was a new way of teaching. In some respects, it's the key to the modern world, that is, thinking for oneself, dealing with the problems, uh, not looking for someone else to find the solutions for you, but to find your own solution. He had tremendous wisdom about what it means to live as a human being. He's left us quite a model. We should always be questioning our tradition because it's only by questioning that tradition develops and grows and matures in one's own lifetime or in one's own generation.